OLED is undoubtedly the king of displays right now, but it's no secret that it comes at a cost, especially at larger sizes where you can expect to drop upwards of $20,000. And look, just know. Now, you can also buy mini LED, but if you're really looking for an extra large display, even that gets pretty unaffordable very quickly, which in the past has just left us with loud and also expensive and low resolution projectors. But let me tell you, things have changed in the world of projectors big time. Not only can you get them for a great price now, but with the Valerian Vision Master Pro 2 I'm reviewing today, you can get picture quality that's not only great, but does something that even OLED still can't. Show the full gamut of BT 2020 HDR color, at least on paper, in content. Not to mention it comes with 3D as well as you can get it in insanely large screen sizes. I mean, a quick look at the spec shows that not only does the Vision Master Pro 2 get up to 300 inches, but it has 110% Rec 2020 coverage, far above even the best displays in the market today, which typically land closer to 80%, which in theory should allow for the most rich colors that you'll probably ever see. But it also comes with 3000 ISO lumens, an optical zoom, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and all the goodies you can expect with a Google TV OS. And in fact, when we compare this to the Plus 2, a model that I've already reviewed, it's a significant 50% enhancement in the overall viewing contrast. And that one was already pretty good. So everything looks amazing on paper, but of course, we'll only know for sure if I actually test it myself. And thankfully, Valerian reached out and agreed to send me one for this review. So let's do just that. Now, I wanna quickly talk about the unboxing because it's actually a really incredible experience. Everything is super premium and it's such a joy to unbox and really makes it feel like you're having an experience rather than a chore. Something I can't say for some of the very heavy TVs that I've unboxed in the past. And to make everything better once you get it out of the box, well, I gotta say the actual design itself, and I don't say this often, it is so premium. It's incredibly well designed with the glass on the front and the metal finish on the edges. It's something that you could definitely put in a room and actually enjoy to look at rather than a cheap plastic eyesore, which is great because you might have it sitting right in the middle of your room. Now, thankfully, after you're done ogling this thing, I mean, come on, let's talk about the actual performance here. You're not gonna be looking at it all day. Well, the setup is thankfully also very easy. I'm a huge fan of the Google OS that they chose to use. Many other TV makers use it and I love it. It's super easy to set up. It doesn't have all kinds of required sign-ins and you can get going without all kinds of crazy spyware in the background, which is Great, but now let's talk about the actual picture quality. I mean, sure, on paper, a 15,000 to one contrast ratio and getting upwards of a 300 inch screen for $2,999 is a lot better of a deal than spending $20,000 on a 97 inch OLED or also 10 to $20,000 on a say 115 to 120 inch mini LED TV. If you need a giant screen, this is probably gonna be the way to go, but let's talk about the actual performances thing. So look, let's talk color first because this is definitely the most impressive, at least in my results. Now I did not get the 110%, although it could depend on how large of a screen you're measuring it on, but I actually got a 95.2% BT2020 coverage result. Now to put that into perspective, even the absolute best QD OLED that I've ever measured still fell short of 90%, which means again, on paper, in theory, this will give you more color in HDR, depending on what you're looking at and the size of your screen, than something like a QD OLED. And we all know how great QD OLED is. And I can also tell you just based on looking at it, yes, the color is incredible. When you pull up scenes, especially full screen HDR content, it does really give a level of saturation that's just absolutely crazy and not in a bad way. It's accurate, yet super deep. I do recall watching the latest Blade Runner movie and there's a scene where there's a ton of yellow in an indoor space and this thing absolutely nailed it in a way that I've not seen before. And I do also want to quickly touch before we jump into brightness, the overall experience of this thing, aside from the color, yeah, it puts out images that honestly shocked me 
for a projector. I mean, my history with projectors has been 1080p, it's been the light bulb, it's been cheap stuff, so I have not seen something to this level before. And honestly, at least in my opinion, it kind of puts my local theaters even to shame, at least in terms of the picture quality in HDR, as it actually gives you a very bright presentation and good contrast and good resolution. And that's hard to achieve. It looks probably a lot closer to say a mini LED quality than something like an LCD, which is what previous projectors I've looked at in the past are kind of closer to. But speaking of that brightness, I mean, what can you expect? Well, I did actually measure in a slightly smaller screen size, close to 1000 nits full screen. So yes, this thing can get really, really bright. Now it does actually get dimmer over time, but that is gonna require you statically displaying a full white screen. Something you're probably not gonna do. Now, in terms of the actual accuracy, I did see very good results in SDR to the box. And if you zoom in here, you'll notice, yes, the minimum brightness did put out about 0.1 nits. Now, OLED is gonna be zero and mini LED in theory can get down to zero, but in real content is gonna be somewhere between something like this and an OLED screen but they do have a feature called EBL or enhanced black level. And when I enabled that, it actually dropped the minimum black reading all the way down to 0.0475 nits. Now that is an incredibly good result for a projector, especially in this price range, and did make for some, again, I'd say a lot closer to mini LED-esque type of viewing, depending on the content. Now, you are not gonna see, say, a 15,000 to one ratio as they advertise in real content, as the way they measure that is likely full black versus full white, but still, it is a very, very good result, and even the accuracy both in SDR, as well as, as you can see here in HDR, was pretty decent, although the HDR did require a few changes to get it to follow the EOTF curve properly. Out of the box, it was a little bit raised on the highlights, which did blow out a few things. And even in the color accuracy test that I did in SDR, it had a pretty solid result of 2.3. That's pretty hard to achieve on projectors, again, especially in this budget range. So the accuracy is pretty good. The brightness is pretty good. I mean, even in my tests here where it's in a larger screen size, I was seeing closer to 500 nits. That's really, really good for a projector. And this is a 4K up to 120 Hertz projector as well. So you're gonna get a really crisp image on top of the great color and pretty decent accuracy as well. Now I did check out the motion interpolation on this thing and it did a pretty good job, but it didn't necessarily blow me away. It wasn't the best in the industry, I'd say. And I think a lot of that's actually down to the laser trying to keep up in general, which speaking of which, let's talk about the latency. So they are saying that it's gonna be as low as four milliseconds at 1080p, 240 hertz, which is pretty wild for a projector and makes this actually probably the first projector I've enjoyed playing games on. But even at 4K 120 hertz, you should get pretty respectable results in the latency. It definitely felt pretty responsive to me, especially for a projector, even when using a mouse on a PC. And in fact, in the motion performance here, you'll see that at the 120 hertz refresh rate, this is very, very impressive stuff for a projector. Yes, it is worse than an OLED, and yes, it's even worse than some of the better mini LEDs. But actually, when I compare this to something like the U8N all the way on the right, I'd say this is possibly comparable, or if not in some ways, better than the U8N, which is very, very impressive for a laser projector. In fact, this is a triple laser projector. So yeah, that's really, really awesome stuff. Now, I do wanna quickly talk about the features of this thing. It comes with 3D. Now, I was expecting this to be kind of a gimmick. I was expecting it to not be that good. I throw on the glasses and let me tell you when you have the content, which look, you're not always gonna have the content. It is actually very good. It, in fact, it was surprisingly good. It was way better than I expected. And it really felt like I was in a theater. I'll show you some images here, her video of me like actually reaching out to grab things. This was really, really good stuff actually. And it's hard to even describe. You kind of gotta use it to understand it, but just think of it as probably maybe the best 3D experience you've had at a theater, it's like that, except for the image quality is probably higher than those memories you have. Now, we've glazed this thing enough. I mean, it has a lot of things about it that are very good. And these are honest opinions of mine, guys. I'm not being paid to give it a good review or anything like that. It does have some issues and that's what I wanna talk about right now. Look, with projectors, they're not gonna be perfect. First of all, if you turn the lights on, it everything just goes to hell. I mean, let's be honest, you are gonna get a terrible, awful image in a bright room. So this is a dark theater room 
only. And the other thing is, depending on the screen that you choose, you can get some grain and you can also get very poor viewing angles. Now this is gonna be highly dependent on the screen you use, but the screen I use, which prioritized the higher brightness when viewed direct on, had those issues of grain and poor viewing angles. In fact, it really fell off a cliff with the viewing angles when you went to a pretty severe angle. So if you're trying to get the max brightness out of something like this, just be aware you'll wanna be facing it directly. Now, in terms of the audio, it does have audio. The audio that comes out of it is decent. It's nothing special, but I will say one other thing about it that I did really like before we wrap this up that has to do with audio, and that's the sound of the projector itself. It is honestly near silent, and that's hard to come by. That's a huge accomplishment from Valerian and I have to give him props. That can actually be a deal breaker when it's bad, and thankfully here it's great. And in fact, I also wanna mention on the Plus 2 on older firmware, I actually had some VRR flicker where I didn't really see it on my model, maybe I got lucky, but there you have it. Oh, I also wanna mention one more thing is, yes, you are gonna have some issues potentially with text fringing as it's a triple RGB laser, so there could be some red fringing or green fringing on the edges of text. But overall, this is really excellent value. I mean, I'm not sure if there's any other display or projector on the market right now that can compete with the price of this thing for people who are looking to fill a very large area with a very large screen. And the HDR picture, while flawed out of the box, it can be fixed and it is overall a huge step up over a lot of projectors that I've seen in the past, especially more budget oriented ones that I've personally come into contact with. So overall, I think I'm gonna give this thing, you know, it's tough to give a score to something like this, but I think I'm gonna have to give it, when compared to other projectors that I've seen, a solid eight out of 10. It's giving you a great image, it's giving you a great price and a whole lot of features that I think are tough to beat in its particular category. Also it looks like they're doing some pretty significant Father's Day sales right now. So if you're thinking about buying one, right now might be a good time. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.